Check out this shiny metal snail I made in the laboratory. I like to call him Squirt. Let me tell you a little bit about how I made Squirt and the science behind how he works. Squirt's story begins when I started doing some experiments with Galenstan, which is a liquid metal. Galenstan's an alloy of the chemical elements gallium, indium, and tin. It has a really high surface tension, so it tends to beat up in circular droplets. I first did some experiments by injecting Galenstan into a solution of copper ions. When this happens, the Galenstan starts to wiggle around like a worm. I covered this experiment in a previous video, and you can check it out in the description. Anyway, I learned how to get Galenstan to react with copper ions by reading this article in the Journal of Chemical Education. But this article also describes how to do the same type of thing by putting Galenstan in a solution of iron-3 ions. So of course I wanted to see if I could get this experiment to work too. So following the instructions in the paper, I filled a petri dish with a solution of acidified iron-3 chloride. Next, I injected in some Galenstan. Whoa! I looked for a second there like the wormy structure was going to form, but unfortunately, it just ended up beating up into a circular droplet. In the article, the authors mentioned that mechanical disturbance could induce the worm-like behavior. So I tried poking the gallon stand a little bit, but... I just couldn't get it to work. I was getting kind of frustrated, so I decided to add some crystals of copper salts, which is known to induce this odd behavior in Galenstan. Hey, and it worked! When the Galenstan made contact with the crystals, it spread through the whole Petri dish in a way that's weird and fascinating at the same time. You can learn more about what's happening here by checking out the video in the description that I mentioned previously. But I was hoping to get the gallon stand to come alive using the iron 3 solution and not copper crystals. So I went back and read the paper again. And this time I noticed the author said that higher acid concentrations make the undulating behavior go faster, but also stop more rapidly. So this made me wonder if I could lower the acid concentration in the solution to slow down the undulations long enough so that they'd persist. I figured the easiest way to do this was just to add some water to the petri dish. So I squirted some water really hard onto a big drop of gallon stand. And it started wiggling around the petri dish like like a metal snail. And that's how Squirt was born. The science that powers how Squirt moves is really interesting. He's fueled by various electrochemical reactions that alter his surface tension. These reactions occur as various metal atoms in Galenstan react with the iron ions in solution to form iron metal. When the iron metal builds up on the surface, this lowers the surface tension. And that allows Squirt to spread out instead of just beating up. But notice that Squirt has bubbles on his backside. These bubbles form when the iron particles on the surface react with the acid in solution to form hydrogen gas. Of course, this reaction consumes iron particles on the surface, and this restores the high surface tension. It's pretty easy to see here. The shiny end with the iron particles is more spread out, and the region with the bubbles is more compact. The difference in surface tension between these two regions is what drives squirt forward. The shiny low surface tension end of squirt spreads out, and pulls the back end along for the ride. 